Hi everyone, I'm Mark Boost, CEO of Sivo, and I'm really sorry I can't be with you today, but um, hopefully I can give you some insights uh, around the student track and uh, the, the mentee framework, mentor and mentorship framework that we've put together, and uh, answer your questions, um, or can I be able to answer your questions live on stage, um, but I'm gonna give you a few helpful tips and guidance, hopefully, uh, to get you started. First tip I want to give you is that I get reached out a lot by many students, um, and I don't necessarily have enough time to reply to every single one. So if you're looking for a mentor, um, the likelihood is they could be quite a busy person. So how do you stand out from the crowd and actually um, you know, uh, have a meaningful conversation that they're actually gonna respond to you? So the first tip I would like to give you is that it's really important to research the person that you potentially want to, to, to help be your mentor. Uh, understand about their background, what their interests are, and also obviously making sure that those interests even align with your interests. There's no point in having a mentor that doesn't uh, align with your goals or your interests. So first of all, you should be you know, reaching out to them, sorry, researching them um, before you reach out to them. And that's my first tip. And the next thing uh, that I would always advise is that the, the way you respond to people or you reach out to people, um, it's really important that that's a really professional approach. Uh, I get a lot of people reach out to me actually that it's almost like a one-liner. Uh, it might be something like, oh, will you be my, will you be my mentor? And that's it. Um, and really, they haven't given me any information about themselves, what they're studying, uh, what they're interested in. And it's highly unlikely that I'm gonna respond to that person um, compared to someone that has really given a meaningful insight into what they've been doing, what they've been studying, what interests they have, maybe what projects they've been contributing to, things like that. And if they align with the values and things that I believe in, then it's more likely that I respond to them. An additional tip, not just about if you're reaching out to someone to be a mentor, and it could be soon in the future you wanna reach out to try and get a job. And I think it's really important to demonstrate uh, what you've been doing to, to kind of really grab hold of your own career and find a job. Um, and again, I get lots of people reaching out to me and saying, here's my resume, and just asking for a job. But really what you want to do is demonstrate all the different contributions and things that you've been doing. And I'd really encourage people to get involved in the community, get involved in open source projects, maybe become an ambassador or something for a, a project that, that you really like or a technology or something like that, and really demonstrate that you're passionate about those subjects. So when you then reach out for, for a job to someone, it's really that interest and that passion is coming through and they're more likely to respond. So you should never, never really reach out to someone and just say, here's my resume, have you got a job? And again, go back, do that research, understand the company and show them what you've been doing. Grab hold of your own career, uh, contribute and demonstrate that when you're reaching out to people, whether that's for a job or whether that's for, to try and find a mentor. So if you eventually find a mentor, uh, and you're working closely with them, it's really important that, that first of all, uh, you understand each other and get to know each other. So I'd always recommend before you even talk about career goals and aligning you know, the, the mentorship program with those things, you just need to really get to know each other and make sure you build that, that empathy and understand each other. Because if your interests are not aligned, um, if you can't find common ground, it's unlikely that they're gonna be the right suitable mentor for you. So, and sometimes you have to hold your hands up and say, this is not the right mentor, and be honest with each other, and find someone else that is better aligned with your own aspirations and, and goals and things. So that's the first thing you wanna do. But once you move beyond that, um, my recommendation is that you start to talk about what your long-term goals are and your interests, and making sure that if the mentorship program, whether that lasts, say one year, three years, five years, you know, you've mapped out some longer term goals that you can work towards um, and, and make sure they align with where you want to be in five years time, say. So that's really important, but you can't just be too focused on the long term goals. You do need to set short term goals as well, because, um, you know, people not, aren't necessarily very good uh, at focusing on real long term things. It's easier to, to sort of break that down into smaller chunks and gradually doing building blocks towards those. So it's important that you set those, those short-term goals that are more achievable um, in, a, in a smaller length of time. So probably one of the most important things um, that maybe I'll leave you with is empathy. Because I think that is the most important character trait that both the mentor and the mentee need to have. For instance, on the, the mentee side, they've got to understand that sometimes these mentors are giving up a lot of their own spare time to help and support you. 
and they're very busy maybe in their, in their own career and, and jobs and, and things that they do. So it's important to understand and appreciate um, what the mentor is doing for you and having that empathy for their own time, um, being respectful of their time. Maybe sometimes meetings and things that you have planned have to move because um, if, it, if it's, for instance, myself who's a busy CEO, uh, I have meetings that might come up, very important things out of the blue. So I might have to adjust the schedule. So it's being respectful of their time. Um, and, and vice versa, from a, from a mentor's point of view, you've really got to build that empathy with your student um, or your mentee to actually understand their interests and, and ensuring it's, it's, um, it's not you just teaching them, it's about aligning them with their goals uh, and supporting them on that process and, and really getting to know that person as an individual and not treating them as a cookie cutter process because we, as we all know we're all very very different and it's important that you map out a program is that is for that that works for that indi individual's uh, goals and not everyone in, in general what i always encourage you to do is is reach out to, the, to people like the cncf they have great programs in place uh, and you can check out uh, the cncf cncf uh, repository on github at cncf forward slash students and it's really great information there and we'd also ask people to contribute towards that so if you want to get involved and help build out this framework and evolve this framework over time you know get involved and because you know the cncf is an amazing community of people and we want to encourage as many people to come into this and, and support this program because it, it's really important that we look after the next generation